All right, we are live. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about some containers, uh, or specifically appliances, and we'll take a look at a few uh, turnkey Linux appliances on Proxmox here once I get signed back into my Proxmox machines. And uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun with this. Also, um, I want to see one other thing before we go to the screen. Um, but yes, I can do that tonight as well. I figured out one of the peculiarities of the Action One RMM software today while I was uh, at work at the library. Um, so I'll just uh, log into my instance of that here. And. Uh, Maybe I could show this off first, and then we'll get started on some other stuff. Um, <laughs> so I I got to wondering, you know, why why are um, the feature updates not running automatically for uh, Windows eleven specifically? Um, and it turns out the Action One guys did did a little bit of a fast one on us. So uh, wish they'd let me default it to a region. Maybe in an upcoming version. And a verification code. So they they did they did uh they pulled a fast one on me, right? Um So instead of having the feature updates, aka the uh, uh, the the yearly updates like twenty three H two, etc., they decided to put that in their software repository. So. I found that a little, little odd, a little peculiar, but if you go into software repository and you type in windows, uh, there is in fact the windows 11 feature update and their, their notes about it, uh, reads, uh, current windows 11 to the latest windows 11 version. Um, so the, the script when it runs actually tells you updating to 23 H2 or most recent version or so something along that lines. So, um, I just, I found that kind of interesting. I, I had purposely not wanted to deploy 23 H2 for a while after it, after it had been released. Uh, but uh, since I had some downtime with some other projects, I thought, you know, let's roll it out to a couple machines just as, you know, guinea pig machines, get it tested a little bit. Um, now that any bugs that would have been in it should have been worked out by now. And so far... Uh, no issues. So, but yeah, I just, I thought that was kind of interesting. I actually had to turn to searching Google to find, find out about this uh, because I had not scrolled through all the pages worth of updates or thought to search windows in the software packages to find that. So anyway, um, 
Let's take a look at who's in chat tonight. Uh, we, of course, have David Grishko two hours before the stream starts. Um, this new YouTube layout on the desktop is weird. I hadn't noticed a big change. Maybe I missed something today. Um, mine looks pretty much the same as it has. Um, maybe they're, maybe they're rolling it out in tears or something. Uh, let's see. We've got Joseph here. Just finished work at Yale. Perfect timing for an hour drive home. I miss these streams. <laughs> uh, good to be back. And Ezra's here tonight. Welcome. And Ron's here tonight. Um, I did have a good break. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's the weather changing and it's starting to warm up here in Michigan. But in the evenings, the last couple of nights, I've just been feeling terribly exhausted. And uh, so I've I've let myself nap a little bit. And uh, it's it's uh, it's all right. It's all right. On Sunday night, I was frantically refreshing, but then I saw the community post. Yeah, I was I was debating on that one. I just I didn't really feel like I had a lot to talk about, <laughs> and and again, I was tired. So, um, is it me or is the video quality pretty good? Video is great, but maybe it's the subject. Har har. Darn windows. And Mark's here. Welcome. Missed you on Sunday as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so, I wanted tonight to talk a little bit about appliances. And I know I've, I've touched on this in other videos and different things before. Uh, but... You know, I, I feel like this is something I've got to shout from the rooftops just to drive the point home. Um, and and I'm sure most of the people in the audience, the live audience tonight, um, have encountered appliances before. But uh, there, there are a bunch of people that I've encountered that overthink it. They... they think it's complicated and it's really not. So the the basics of an appliance is you, you know consider an appliance in your kitchen. Everybody's got a stove, right? A stove has a couple of primary functions. You know, you've got a cooktop and you've got the oven generally. Um and it doesn't do much else besides heating of food. And the idea carries over to um, Linux appliances. And, you know, there are BSD appliances and, and other things out there. Um, you could consider... Uh, PFSense firewall as an appliance. Um, you can either set the software up yourself or you can buy the hardware with the software installed for you. Um, um, and David brings up a good point here as well. FortiGate firewalls are Linux-based appliances. So, one of the uh, appliance suppliers that I've relied on for years, let me bring this back on screen, is Turnkey Linux. 
Turnkey Linux appliances are built on a stripped down Debian Linux with just enough of the operating system utilities there to let you run an application. So if we uh, come over here, all virtual appliances. So they've got all kinds of different things. So a file server is an example of an appliance. Um, you might think of Open Media Vault or TrueNAS Scale as appliances. They are a little bit more on the DIY end of things than something like a Synology or a QNAP network attached storage box. But the idea behind it is very similar. Now, granted, you're going to have a prettier interface on a Synology than you are on something like the uh, file server here from Turnkey Linux, but you, you know, it's it's one of those things. Do you want something just stupid easy, or do you want something where you can learn as you configure things? And the answer will be different for different people, right? So let's let's come over here somewhere. I've got way too many tabs open again. Um, one of the nice things about Proxmox as a virtualization platform is that it gives you the opportunity to um, to have not only virtual machines, but also containers. And you don't need to worry about the details of that too much right now. It's just different ways to run things on Proxmox, right? So... <clears throat> Uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? So if we come over to our storage and to container templates, and if we click on templates, you'll see that we've got a number of different things we can run. Uh, all these are LexC containers or LXC, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And if we collapse the first two sections, you'll see that we've got a whole section that is just turnkey Linux appliances. So, for instance, we can find the file server. We can download this, and it's going to be a pretty small download. It might take a little bit longer since I'm streaming, but it's only nine point. Uh, no, I take it back. That's that's the segment or the chunk size they've got there. But the point being, it's a very small download. We're already 60% done with it. Uh, and while we're waiting on that, let's take a look in here into the chat. There are no obligations. If there's no stream, there's no stream. Take a break. Thank you. I Sometimes need that break, and usually I found it's after I try to push myself and do a bunch of content in a single month. Um, <laughs> there, there's a reason that I only try that twice a year, um, and we'll uh, we'll see we'll see if I decide to do it in October or not. I may. I, I don't know yet. 
IX Systems wants you to treat TrueNAS as an appliance. Don't go messing around too much in the CLI. The only thing guaranteed to be kept after an update are those things adjusted or set in the GUI. Yes. Uh, and Open Media Vault is much the same way. Maybe not quite to the uh, extent of TrueNAS, but it's, it's uh, moving in that direction, it seems. I rebooted after the stream. At the start of the stream, scrolls through 50 plus tabs and knows where to exactly land in one second. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yes, before the stream. Yep. Uh, I, I do try to reboot before the streams. Okay, so we've got the turnkey Linux uh, appliance template downloaded. So we can come over here to our node and say create container. Uh, we're just going to call it TKL files and give it a password. And we'll accept the defaults on that. We might have to adjust them later. Select your template. And it's the top one here. Next. Uh, let's say we we'll give it 20 gigs of disk. Just for the sake of argument to play with. And we'll give it two cores. And... Probably overkill for memory, but hey, network is fine. We're going to put that on DHCP just for the demo. DNS. Confirm. Start after creation. Finish. And this really does make it quick and easy to spin something up, especially if you want to just test something out, right? So uh, we can TKL files, go to the console, and login is root. And the password is whatever I specified. All right. And so it starts off by asking you a series of questions. This is part of their standardized installer process. Uh, the questions might be a little bit different, but normally you start off by setting passwords, which is great because we all know what can happen when default passwords are set. So that's the Samba password. We're going to skip the hub services. We're going to skip the email and we're going to install. And Really, this is this is a pretty automated process for all intents and purposes. Uh, you answer a few questions and you let it do its thing. You go get a cup of coffee and you come back and it's good to go. Uh, and once once uh, this is done, it should tell us uh, the IP address of a web interface to log into and uh, we can get into that. So it's going to have us reboot. Again, with a container, it's very quick to restart. There we go. Okay, so now it's telling us um, uh, 
information about the system. And for advanced configuration, run conf console and we'll grab the IP address. And pop that into the, the web browser. And we've got our choice of a few things. So uh, Turnkey Linux does make a lot of use of Webmin. Um, and it's indicating here that uh, Samba configuration via Webmin login first. So Oops, advanced, accept risk and continue. Okay. And now if uh, I, I would imagine some of you are familiar with Webmin, uh, but it's a web-based interface for configuring Linux servers. Um, I almost hope that at some point, at least for the file server appliance, they might consider moving over to cockpit, but um, they are they are at this point still on Webmin. Um, so there's a dashboard. Gives you information there. It's running the 6.5 kernel. And uh, resource usage is, is pretty low. <laughs> um, so it's been a minute since I've run this, this particular um, appliance. But uh, um, this does give you access to Samba, which is, of course, Windows file sharing um in this interface and there are a bunch of things that you can configure from here so uh, my point tonight wasn't to go deep into the configuration of this but just to show how quick it is to spin up a new server using turnkey linux now, the other thing I wanted to point out is that um, many of these are available. So, for instance, we click on File Server. Many of these are available as a downloadable ISO image. So, if you had a physical box that you wanted to install the turnkey file server appliance on, you just download the ISO image and the install portion is going to be almost exactly the same as what we just went through. The big difference is that you have to get the ISO image onto a USB flash drive in a way that it will boot. So you could use Rufus or Ventoy, uh, Ventoy being my um, tool of choice. You could use Belena Etcher um, or a number of other things that are out there. Um, it all depends on whether you want to put a single ISO on the USB stick or if you want to put multiple ISOs on a larger capacity USB stick. Or, of course, you've got the um, option to do a network boot type setup. Uh, so there's iVentoy and there's Netboot XYZ. 
and um, Don over at uh, Nova Spirit Tech recently did videos on both of these solutions. Um, I, of course, since I'm a fan of Ventoy itself for USB sticks, um, I really like the look of iVentoy, and that's probably the direction I would go, but uh, I may test both of them. So anyway, um, it, it's pretty easy to get this stuff set up. And diving into these types of appliances and um, setting them up, doing the configuration, finding out to a certain extent, however deep you want to dive, what makes them tick and, you, you know, how you recover from any issues that you might encounter is only going to put your um, learning process ahead rather than just, you know, watching videos and um, trying to trying to work from that. I, I'm very much an advocate of hands-on learning when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, I can't even begin to give you an estimate of how many different Linux distributions and turnkey Linux appliances and other appliances from different sources that I've installed over the last 20 odd years. But the when it comes to brass tacks, it's, it's really all very similar. If you take the time to read the prompts on screen, you can make pretty good assumptions most of the time of what the questions are wanting as an answer and end up with a working system. Now, that system may not be the most optimized, but you've got it as a starting point. So that's, that's, um, I guess a little, little, uh, intro to containers 101 and just kind of getting this information out there. Um, I, I've encountered a lot of people, especially coming from a Windows only background where, you know, things like this just completely blows their mind. Um, you know, they, they have problems. Uh, many of these people I've encountered, they have problems wrapping their head around virtualization. And, uh, you, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that I've done so much with virtualization over the last 20 years that it's like, where have you been? <laughs> I, I don't say that to them, of course, but, um, you, you know, I have to come up with creative ways to explain virtualization and containers to them so they can wrap their heads around it. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting time to be approaching this, um, these subjects, because, you, you know, if you listen to the, the, the common narrative these days, Oh, these young people, they're great with computers. Um, except they don't understand what a file manager is or where to locate things on their computer or how to print a PDF file. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, 
one of those things. Um, I've got a niece that turned 20 today and um, I, I don't know as though she owns a USB flash drive. Um, she, she's uh, in a bit of a panic now because uh, we've got taxes due here in the States in a few days and she hasn't printed off her, her tax forms from her previous employer. And so I don't know if they're going to come over here tonight or tomorrow morning or if they're going to send me something to print for them. Um, but it just, it boggles my mind how the system has failed the young people to a point that they don't understand file locations, uh, your, your downloads, your documents, your music, your videos, and where to find those things on your computer. Um, I, I just, if this is what is happening in the educational system in the U S then man in 20 more years, we're going to have major, major problems. Um, I, uh, I don't even know. Uh, let's see. When is the whiskey coming out? How about right now? I've had my rant just for you, Joe. Wow, that whiskey bottle is almost half gone already. <laughs> um... Virtualization is my hobby, mine as well, as you can tell by my topics on this channel. Install, mess with it, and delete it. Yes, absolutely. Something I actually know about, putting an ISO on a USB stick. Yeah. Kids nowadays have no concept of file management because everything is an app. Yeah. Uh... And, and that's what gets them when they transition from a, a phone or a Chromebook to a real computer. They, they just, they're like fish without water, flopping around, not knowing how to handle anything. Just finished my taxes yesterday. I finished mine on Sunday. I had a phone call with my financial advisor and, uh, uh, he did all the bits and I said, yes, go ahead and submit. And that was that. <laughs> I spoke to a high school today and boy, was it different than when I went to school. I imagine, I imagine. And yes, inquiring minds want, want to know what was shocking. The kids were in the hallway on cell phones during class. Holy hell. It won't be sooner than that. Half the kids in class didn't even pay attention. There's no attention span because of TikTok and social media. Yep. And I would go so far as to say there's no attention span because parents use phones and other devices as a babysitter. I've got to put a lot of the blame on the parents, says the guy that has no kids. Um, almost as if I planned it that way. As soon as the machines start breaking that perform all the tasks and no one know how to repair them or perform that task, we are doomed. Yeah, uh, on the bright side, I probably won't be alive when that all happens. 
think one was wearing earbuds the whole time. Not surprising. We have a Generation Z, and as if, if we ask her to send an email while she's in front of her computer, Outlook open, she still picks up her phone to send the email. <laughs> Facepalm. Oh, my gosh. My wife would rather do things on her phone than a computer, and she is older than me. Ooh. Now, that's an interesting turn of events. People say the younger uh, know about computers. They don't. They have been made reliant and de-skilled and made addicted to Apple or Windows. Uh, I think it's worse than that. I think it's addicted to devices and not necessarily Apple or Windows. It's it's Android or iOS. Uh, and yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's sad because it's uh, I remember at the community college level taking classes where they spent an extended amount of time talking about file management and, and just these concepts that are so stupid, simple. And, and it's like, think of a file cabinet translate to translate that to an electronic equivalent it's it's not uh i don't know she gets mad when there are things she can't do on her phone yeah well i i yeah <laughs> i actually got stumped by somebody's phone at the library um yesterday some lady brought in, she had um, bank statements and we downloaded them to the phone, but I had zero context as to where they were saving. I couldn't find them in order to get them printed for her. Um, and of course she didn't know the password to her email so she could just log into one of our public computers to print off her stuff. Uh, it's, it's mind boggling. How can people have email accounts and not know the password to it or have it in a password manager or I don't know, at least have things set up so that they could reset it if they needed to. It's maddening. It's been very interesting having someone work for us with about 15 years younger. Yeah, I can I can only imagine. Personal devices, no concept of technical ability, everything is abstracted. Yep. You got it. We thought we were still cool and knew all the slang and apparently we are very old now. Yeah, and I've got years on you, Joe, so <laughs> think of the rest of us. Um, a teacher today was Dr. Bond, no joke. <laughs> uh, they don't even know what a file cabinet is. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. Got to go be back in a bit. All right, see you, Jay. Does your library provide general IT support uh, or do people just go to the library because they don't know where else to turn? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the IT support. Um, I had to send, today I had to send a lady to the Apple store because she got a new MacBook Pro. At least I think it's a MacBook Pro. Maybe it's an Air. Anyway, um, between her Apple ID and the login password and the email, she was stuck in a, a password reset loop that 
I couldn't figure out how to get her out of because it it just kept asking and asking and asking. And I told her that, you know, I didn't want to make the problem worse and that her best bet was probably going to the Apple store. Uh, I, I hate to admit defeat like that, but, um, man, some of this stuff is just getting to the point where it's, it's kind of a Charlie Foxtrot. It's kind of a Charlie Foxtrot. Uh, for people that know military slang. Um, he could have got the lady's email passwords from the phone. Uh, possibly, but it's an iPhone and I'm not an iPhone person. So I don't know where to look for the passwords on an iPhone. And uh, that's what Apple stores are for. They can support their products. Yeah, it's it's a challenge some days. Being IT support for people who can't comprehend sucks. I will only do that for $100 an hour minimum. Yeah, I, I wish I was making that kind of money. Um, and, and I... When the time comes, and I'm sure it will come, but when the time comes that I do leave the library... Uh, they're not going to get anybody in with my skill set for, for what they're willing to pay. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. Um, yeah. Uh, just one snafu after another. Situation normal, all effed up <laughs> uh even heroes need heroes jeremy is the bravest of all the public servants i don't know about that but there are days that if i had hair i'd pull it out yeah i tried that didn't work They have keychain on iOS. Maybe the password was in there. Yeah, I I really don't like accessing people's passwords. I don't want to know that information. And yeah, for the amount of money they're paying me, I'm okay deferring it to somebody else. I'm okay deferring it to somebody else. Yeah, I tried that as well. Um, it didn't work. So, anyway. Um, yeah, that was... That was uh, some fun I had at the library today. Got a little introduction. Talk about uh, appliances out of the way. And, y y you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't even know. It's, it's going to be interesting the next few years. At some point, it becomes a liability for the library. Better to have boundaries. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, the problem is they they kept pushing to have me offer more and more services. And uh, I'm starting to draw that line because I've got other things to do, like trying to get our website ADA compliant so that we don't end up with a lawsuit at some point in the future. Um, and, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> that's, that's a whole story in and of itself. So I don't know, about 18 months ago, maybe I, I had contact with a company that has a plugin for WordPress and it's not cheap, uh, but it's, it's 
by far not the most expensive option out there either. Um, so uh, some of you might remember me talking about having a meeting with a company uh, on Monday of this week. And this company has a completely proprietary platform. Um, it's not WordPress. It's, it's something else. It's got its own custom backend. It's got some AI stuff built in, but their big thing is about being ADA compliant, right? Which sounds great on the surface. But uh, their uh, their pricing was twenty five hundred dollars for setup. Um, plus six thousand dollars a year, uh, five hundred bucks a month, plus for all the PDF files we've got on the website to convert those to being compliant, it's $7 per page. And so just their setup fee and a third of the yearly fee would completely blow my technology budget for a year. And so, you know, it's one of those situations where um, unless I can find a company that is willing to do some of this conversion work for free or at a very discounted price, um, Ultimately, what's going to happen is over the summer, I will make the website ADA compliant. And what that is going to mean is there are going to be a lot of pages on the website that are going to be stripped out. And those resources are only going to be available if somebody comes into the library. All those PDFs, uh, many of which are scans of microfilm of newspapers that date back to the late 1800s, those are going to come off the website. Um, there's there's no way the library is going to pay seven dollars a page to have those converted to be ADA compliant. Um, they just won't be available. You can request them if you come in in person. You can request them by phone uh, or what have you, but there's, there's no way to make the numbers work to beat the requirements that we would have to hit for ADA compliance and keep all those PDF documents on the website. So that's that's my big project. I'm I'm going to be eyeballs deep in um, redeveloping the website over the summer. And um, yeah, it's it's going to be vastly simplified from what it is right now, and that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, I did not want to be a web developer and I'm being pushed to do that job and um, still keep up with the other things I've got to do, like keeping computers patched and whatnot. And yeah, um, the, the numbers don't work. So I don't know. When I went to Apple Store to replace my phone for free, there were older people in there with a physical notebook full of passwords. That's scary. 
Sounds like a liability. Yep. Unfortunately, I have set my father up with Bitwarden and he doesn't use it. He still writes down the damn passwords. So he asks for more services, only do it for more pay. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm continuing to look for other jobs. Um, because they're going to find out what a world of hurt they are in because... Um, like I said, they're not going to find somebody with my skill set that's going to work for the amount of money they want to pay. And in all honesty, I think they, at this point, would be better off outsourcing the website and let somebody do a complete redesign on it and handle the ADA crap. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a thing. At work, they finally got our print server fixed. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Seven bucks a page. Hell no. Yeah. And many of these PDFs on the website are probably 20 pages each. And then we've got yearbooks that have been scanned to PDF. And so those are easily, you know, a hundred pages each there, 150 pages each there. Um, yeah. I'll do it for $6 a page. Right. Right. Why waste time even looking at them? Yeah. Well, you've got these these historian type people. Um one one thing I'm I'm actually considering and I need to see if I can find some contacts for people is uh reaching out to the university I went to actually has um archives of old newspapers. Uh, I'm not sure if they do yearbooks or not, but they've got archives of old newspapers. And uh, maybe it's going to be a matter of turning turning the archives from our newspapers over to them and they can handle the um, conversion work for the PDFs. And... Um, you know they've got a they've got a good sized library at the university, and um, you, you know it's it's uh, they've got to have students willing to do that work for cheaper than seven bucks a page. I wouldn't even blink at them. Why don't you just put a paywall in front of anything that isn't ADA compliant? Yeah, unfortunately, as a library, you can't do that. By agreeing to this paywall, you agree not to sue us, right? Um, uh, you can always say, go to the state's Congress and ask for more funding for ADA. We don't have it, sorry. Yeah. Well, that's that's a hard conversation I'm going to have with the director uh, probably next week and um, just lay out some options to her and say, hey, how do you want to proceed? I used to work with an anchor who got banned from local computer shop because she stopped in and wanted free tech support. She couldn't figure out how to use her Mac. Oh boy. Band, that's funny. Uh, some people also feel like tech support should be free. Yeah, it's it's a thing. <laughs> and I'm I'm willing, I'm willing to do it as part of the library to a point, but you know, I can't be spending my whole day doing tech support for the 
unwashed masses that come through the doors because I do have other responsibilities that um, I need to take care of. Uh, I, I have been able to get a few a few people trained to set up an appointment and not just show up and expect me to drop what I'm doing. Um, Cause I've had people show up when I'm in a webinar and it's like, sorry, I've had this scheduled for two weeks, you know, um, make an appointment or find some uh, other place to go. Let's see. It's up print to the printer next to me and it comes out on the other side of the shop and servers in Europe. Oh, that's a bugger. That's uh, a lot of traveling for a printer that's next to you. She went there a lot before they banned her. <laughs> Have you thought about doing an internship, having that be an intern project? Um, the problem is I have still to dig down into what it would take to make a PDF compliant. And then acquiring the software to make said PDF uh, compliant. And then knowing the process enough myself so I could train somebody else. Um, so, yeah. She then wanted us to support her, so I told her we don't know Mac, even though I had one at home. She didn't know that. Why should she need to? <laughs> She's entitled too much. Yeah. She wasn't even good at her job. <laughs> Tech takes years to learn. Docs don't provide free services. Yeah. I got to go again. Just remove everything that costs $7. Right. That's, that's what it's pretty much going to come down to, <clears throat> in all honesty. Hmm. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping in, Ron. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, like the stream if you haven't already. That would be very helpful. Keep the channel moving forward a little bit. Close public website. Well, uh, it won't completely close, but it's going to get scaled back. Uh, I'm afraid that's the only solution at this point. So uh, just to give a little update, as I've been trying to do this a little bit, we are up to 5,762 subscribers on the channel. And uh, obviously revenue is down a bit from last month, but... Uh, uh, still showing almost $42 in, uh, I don't, well, obviously it hasn't counted today. So the first nine days of the month. So if this keeps up, then, uh, I will keep getting paid on a monthly basis from YouTube, <laughs> which I, I kind of like, um, so, huh, um, another another funny here. Um, the um, speaking of, of things that people don't understand, you know, Windows is by far the most prevalent OS out there, right? And regardless of which OS you're using, Linux, Mac OS, Windows, BSD, 
whatever else is out there, they all have a concept of a path, a path being how to get from here to there where some file is stored, right? Uh, so I don't even know how far back I made this video. Um, let me find out here. So I made this video in 2022, apparently. Um, and the idea behind it was a simple one, right? So I had been for a number of years, a pretty heavy use uh, user of VirtualBox. And I had noticed that when I install it on Linux, I can drop to the command line, I can use the VBox manage command, and I can do a number of things with VirtualBox from the command line. I installed it on an Intel Mac, go to the command line, I can, I can, uh, run VBox Manage with no issues. Install VirtualBox on Windows. It doesn't know how to get to VBox Manage. And so I, I made a video on this two years ago. <laughs> this video has over 10,000 views now. Just because I went through the steps to set up the path so that Windows can see where VBox manages. Because in all their infinite wisdom, Oracle, this multi-million, possibly multi-billion dollar company, can't make the installer on Windows set the doggone path so this utility works after a fresh install. I mean, talk about things that are a little on the brain dead side. Um, you know, I just, uh, I, I just, I don't even know that it, it just little things like that. It, it's just, why isn't there feature parity across the installers? I know you can do that in an installer on Windows. The question is, why didn't they? Year after year, release after release. I don't get it. Um, but anyways, th this was brought on because I, I happened to, to look over at um, my comments on the... YouTube studio and lo and behold, there's another comment from 24 minutes ago. Thank you for this. Really helpful uh, on that um, video that detailed how to set a path in windows. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I just can't fathom, you know, does Oracle have no quality assurance testers? Um, maybe I'm asking too much. <laughs> I did spend too many years, um, doing quality assurance testing. So, um, which is one of the reasons I don't really dabble in programming anymore because I still got PTSD from those six years and having to use VB script. Talk about a brain dead half-assed language thankfully it's discontinued and um no longer supported i love to hear some more library horror stories <laughs> okay so we we've got we've got a lady that comes in on a, a, a quite a regular basis um nearly daily some weeks and she will sit at the uh, at a table up in the the front window of the library with her earbuds in and uh 
um, we all know her name, but I I sort of coined a, a nickname for her because she she gets into her music and she makes these noises. They they're almost like moaning noises and um. So, um, what, what, what was the, the nickname? Um, give me a second here. Um, so we, we called her, we, we, uh, came up with the nickname Naomi because Naomi is I moan backwards. Yeah, that's it's a thing. <laughs> um so I get I guess that's one. Um hmm, I had to think of what some of the others are. Tell you the truth, in today's culture, I'm surprised the library has not been sued yet. Yeah. Um and that's well, the, the law isn't in effect yet. Uh, I think it's fall of 2026 that it goes into effect. Will you party at 6K? Uh, what are you talking, 6K resolution? Or uh, are you talking $6,000? Or... Um, <laughs> I need context between my little rant and trying to read other comments. I, I, I need context. I have YouTube premium. So you're making some coin for me. Uh, yes. Uh, I appreciate that. I know there are a few of you that have, uh, have YouTube premium. And Mr. Joe hit me with $4.99 for the GPS project. I, I thought the first rule of the GPS project was we don't talk about the GPS project. Are you talking about path? Yep. Right, right. Um but you can set a path for, for other things if you want to have, um, yeah, directories, uh, files located other places that aren't in the standard path for virtual box. Yep. Uh, biggest money making department in Oracle is the legal department. Yep. I don't doubt that. Um, yeah, Naomi, <laughs> you never thought of it that way, did you, Joe? So, so now you, you, you will, uh, uh pass up to hire the next person named Naomi that tries to, uh, apply to, to capture the concept or streaming CT because, uh, you, you won't be able to stop laughing now that I made it a thing. Reminds me of this generation will never know why they call her Lassie. <laughs> that is such a classic film. <laughs> oh my. 6,000 subs. Took you too long to read it. My bad. <laughs> uh, I've been learning and testing AI apps on my phone. The insane number of apps that are loaded with advertising. Imagine, imagine computer programs having that number of ads. Yeah. And paywalls. Yep. Uh, that's why one of my summer projects, uh, one of many summer projects, I'm afraid, uh, is going to be to set up a local AI instance running here on my own servers. <laughs> Um, that I can feel comfortable training with my own data, <laughs> you know, uh, ET, no phone home. 
Um, <laughs> probably dating myself by by that uh comment as well but hey uh so to answer your question joe uh i'll likely do something when i hit six thousand subs um not sure what probably something bigger will happen when i hit 7500 subs uh, but, um, I'll do something for 6,000. Uh, I'm only like 240 odd, uh, subscribers away from that. So probably, probably in June, early June, I, I would, I would, uh, estimate, um, We ever do a 12 hour stream or anything like on New Year's? Um, so I'm normally out of state on New Year's. Um, but uh, um, I, I've been I've been uh, approached by another individual that may or may not be in chat about doing at least a four hour stream since I've already hit one with three and a half hours. Uh, so maybe I'll try to work up to something like that. Um, but if I do a, if I were to do a 12 hour stream, it would likely be on a Saturday. And uh, it'd be probably like a 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. type of thing. Uh, it would be something where I would want to have people, um, willing to come on, uh, to be interviewed, uh, or to, to ask me questions on screen. Uh, because one thing I found from, from, um, having TVJ on last Friday night was that, having somebody else on screen with you makes the time pass a whole lot quicker. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm, uh, considering working up to something like that. Uh, that might be, you, you know, uh, might be a trial run, um, at some point And then, at maybe a members only 12 hour stream as a trial run. Um, and then uh, when I hit 10,000 subscribers, maybe I'll do a public 12 hour stream. So I, I guess I'll throw that out there. Well, if we do hire a Naomi, <laughs> it'll be for a new video division. <laughs> but that would make sense for that name, <laughs> right? <laughs> Good luck running that by the boss. Library, li lady in library by window. Is she reading Fifty Shades of Grey? No, she's usually got her headphones in listening to music. Uh, she's just got no sense of rhythm or um, pitch. 12 hour stream for 6,000. Uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get something going. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I like the, the, uh, the idea of more like 7,500 and 10,000, but, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take it under consideration. <laughs> hello ashley <laughs> good to see you here I'll, I'll have you know that that uh i think on sunday when i looked at statistics for the site for for the channel uh i was up to a one one whole percent female viewership one one whole percent so Is the lady listening to Yoko Ono? <laughs> that would explain it. Uh, that that would explain it. 
six hour stream for six thousand. That 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 might be that might be doable. Woohoo! <laughs> On your way up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's slow going, but I guess I guess we're getting there. Um, most of the time, it's kind of a sausage fest in, in this this uh, sector of YouTube, I guess. <clears throat> I'll come on with you and build thumbs and that new program thing. Yeah, I, I've got to I've got to send you an email and get you information about that program and then uh we can talk about a date i know you guys have this yale thing going right now so maybe when things lighten up for you a bit um i i think that would be something different on the channel for sure All right, we are an hour and 18 minutes in. Uh, we'll go to two tonight. I do have to work tomorrow, so I'm, I'm uh, on a weeknight. I'm, I'm not going to really go over two, um, but uh, we'll, we'll hit two and uh, go from there. So... Uh, don't have really much new to report on the uh, the teaser course. Um, progress has slowed down, uh, but in all honesty, I kind of needed that couple of days to, to reset from the push in March. So um, I'm hoping the next couple of days I can I can get back into that and get pushing so I can, you know, maybe have, have the teaser course, a small course done, uh, potentially end of next week. Um, and, uh, get that into people's hands and get some initial feedback on it and then start, start building the big course. Um, I I'm, I'm considering, uh, for the small course, I've had several people comment that I shouldn't just give it away, even though it's just a small course. Um, so what I might do is uh, price it at $9.99. Uh, and then, you know, if people come in um, the live streams, then I might put up a coupon code that will get a discount. Um, so it's, you know... Three ninety nine or something like that, uh, at least at the beginning, so I can get some initial feedback going. Um, but I've had several people comment to me that I shouldn't just completely give it away for free. So I'm I'm trying to take that under consideration. Um, although my my original thought with this particular course being a a smaller course and being a situation of me learning the software uh, was that I, I was planning to give it away for free, but I, I guess I could put a, a low price on it just to um, appease the masses as, as if, if you will. And uh, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll be a learning process for me because there's stuff to manage on the back end and that'll take some time once I've got some actual students enrolled in this, this thing. So, um, but, uh, yeah, things are, things have slowed, but I'm looking to, uh, kick back into gear and, um, start pushing on that over the next several days. So that's, that's a little update there. Um, but, um, yeah. Better refill the whiskey. <laughs> Have two guests. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. What's your favorite server distribution? 
Um, these days, if I set up just a, a bog standard Linux server, I normally gravitate towards Debian. Um, I've never been, well, I'll take that back. I've, since I got my start with Red Hat based distributions, and it was really before um, RPM had all the bugs worked out, um, it was still at a time when, well, when I first started, I was still on dial up. So that made things interesting and loading stuff off from CDs. Um, Thankfully, at the time, they were giving you, like, everything on, you know, six disks or whatever it was, including source code. Uh, but um, given the growing pains I encountered with Red Hat stuff, I tend not to use Red Hat-based distributions these days. Um, so I normally go to, um, go to Debian and build up from there. Uh, I have used Ubuntu server for some things. Um, it has its uses, I guess. Um, I, I will say that for some things, uh, especially server related things, I don't actually mind snaps. I just don't like them as much on desktop distributions. Um, I also don't like that Canonical has taken such a hard line uh, approach that, you know, they don't let uh, Flatpak be installed by default on their derivative distributions. That just kind of irks me. But uh, what do I know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I... Uh, I, I tend to go more towards um, Debian type stuff. I agree, nothing is free. Include a donation box, of course. Yep. If people won't pay $10, they aren't going to pay for the real course, which means you don't want their feedback. Right. <laughs> um, in addition to pay bit, right. Um, I alternate between Debian and Ubuntu, depending on the latest release. Ubuntu is a snapshot. Debian, unstable, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I like Alma Linux when it comes to rel type of distros. Yeah, I, I've i used uh, Alma and Rocky both, and I... I guess I'm not really the person to ask on that because I didn't see a whole heck of a lot of difference between the two of them, at least the time when I tested them out. Remind me, can you go full CLI on Proxmox if you didn't want to use the GUI? Um, so the GUI is installed by default you could um, manage everything from the from the command line if you wanted to. Um, it would just uh, mean learning all the the switches for the different commands to you know start a VM and and do different things. But um, I mean the um, oops the um, There, there are a bunch of things um, that you can do from the command line, um, like QM list. Uh, since um, Proxmox is layered, it is their interface is a layer on top of a combination of KVM and uh, QEMU and um, 
uh, Lexi, right? So the QM list command is going to list the, um, these are actual virtual machines. Um, and it will tell you which one is running and wh what's running and what stopped, how much memory is allocated, uh, things of that nature. Um, and honestly, I haven't worked at the command line in uh, uh, Proxmox in a while. But, um, you, you know, there's all kinds of, of uh, commands here that you can use. You can clone things. You can create virtual machines, um, destroy virtual machines, just all kinds of things you can do from the command line. Which, you know, much like Proxmox, it can be handy to at least be familiar with the commands, even if you aren't going to strictly use uh, the command line, right? So just uh, for the sake of argument, um, I do have, oh, let's see. What do I have? I know I had a, a video on Proxmox. There, there it is. Proxmox command line utilities. From 2021, it got 2,856 views. So it didn't do as well as some of the other Proxmox related things like Proxmox backup server got 13,000. Removing the no subscription nag got 18,000. Um, you, you know, uh, it's, it's sometimes mind boggling that some of these will hit and others will just fall flat on their face. This one surprised me. Upload an ISO image, which is one of the most basic, basic things in Proxmox. But it got over 10,000 views. Um, granted, it's it's a almost four-year-old video, but um, I, I guess that falls under the... Uh, evergreen content uh but i mean even with a craptastic thumbnail it got ten thousand views <laughs> and i'm not sure the i'm not sure the uh that's in four playlists does it have an end screen it does i guess i could set that while i'm here and it's got 376 characters worth of tags. Although YouTube has said over and over again that tags don't matter. So, you, you know, um, so we'll do that while we're here. Uh, but like the, there's no chapters in this. Of course, this was only two minutes and 44 seconds long. And, you know, I, I don't do chapters on a video that short, especially something under five minutes. You can scrub through the video in less time than what it takes me to build chapters. I don't know. Um, But yeah, I mean, I've got stuff out there. Um, I mean, I should probably consider making some of this stuff, making an updated video, just because I've got more subscribers now than I had four years ago when several of these were made. Uh, let's 
see. Let's see. I was thinking if there was some compliance reason where you had to only SSH but no HTTP traffic for hypervisor. Yeah, that's that's doable. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's also possible to set up a, a certificate so you could do HTTPS. Um, but yeah, uh, you can go full CLI. You can even develop your own GUI if you want using the API. Yep. There's a video idea. <laughs> um, yeah, I could do another command line video and go a little bit deeper than I did in the previous ones. <clears throat> I had to, I've had to jump into the CLI to terminate a container that refused to be stopped from the GUI. Yes, I've had to do that as well. <laughs> and <laughs> that's... That's one of the primary reasons that I started looking at the commands <clears throat> is, is just for that kind of use case. I use the API to build out a sync tool between Proxmox and Netbox. Nice. Your Proxmox videos all seem to have in the thousands. Pretty cool. Yep. Yep. It's... One of one of the things that I'm more proud of, I guess. I mean, the um, if we sort by views, I mean, most of what has hit over, you know, over twenty thousand is all fog related, um, with a couple of exceptions. There's. Uh, the Alme backup or partition assistant, which I didn't even really want to make that video, but got me 35,000 views. Migrating a VM from VirtualBox to Proxmox. Hit um, Zigma NAS, hit pretty decent. Uh, even updating AMD drivers on a Windows 11 box has got me almost 20,000 views. Um, and there are some things that are on here that have, you know, at least above 10 or even above 15 that are, I would call them legacy. Um, Netbox 14 is very old. Um, storage on Open Media Vault 6, that's, a little more evergreen, uh, but fog 1.5, that's, you know, 2018. I've done newer fog videos, but the old ones still keep getting views. I kind of cornered that market for a while there. And then they stopped developing things. Uh, even that first barcode scanner video I did has got me over 15,000 views. <laughs> But um, all with these craptastically embarrassing thumbnails. Um, but, you know, on videos that are four to six years old, I'm not really going to go back and spend a bunch of time redoing thumbnails. So, but if uh, you see some idea here that you can pick out that would make a good new video... I'm I'm open to suggestions. Um, that was before you can upload ISOs in the GUI. Now you can. Um, I've been able to upload ISOs in the GUI as long as I can remember. I know there was, uh, you couldn't always download them directly but I think it's always had the option to upload ISOs in the GUI as long as I've been using it. Uh, 
Uh, I'm sure I did. I'm very far behind in my emails at this point. <laughs> yeah, success leaves clues. <laughs> Uh, tags can be of use, but the experts, including the people from YouTube themselves, are saying that it's most useful uh, if you're going to hit for search or if you're going to use tags that are words that are commonly misspelled. Um, so going back and doing new tags on old videos doesn't make a lot of sense as far as... Uh, making good use of my time. Can you show the APIs? I, mm, uh, here's the API documentation. I am not a programmer. I don't wanna be a programmer. And so using APIs directly uh, is probably not something that I'm going to do a lot, um, but it looks like your standard HTML-esque get, put, delete type things. Um, yeah, I am not terribly knowledgeable in that stuff. As I mentioned, I'm not a programmer. And because of spending six years doing automated software quality assurance testing, I don't have much interest in digging back into that part of my skill set these days. Uh, it kind of ruined that experience, kind of ruined it for me. That and them trying to make me learn COBOL. Talk about backwards language. But what do you expect from the 1950s? Successful videos that make you more related. Let's see. Apparently in Proxmox, a Lex C container is a systemd service. Could be, I guess. <clears throat> Because even PVECM didn't do it justice. Audience generated content, same as shops, st stocks, books, or goods. Any video over a year, do an update. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm with you there. The place where I draw a line is if the software hasn't had an update in a year, I really don't want to make more videos on it because I don't want to have people using obsolete software or software that's not getting updates because of a video of mine. It's, it's a security risk. It's just not good to go that long without updates. Uh, let's see. When I looked at your most popular a while ago, there are about 10. Okay. Pretty much a basic REST API. Yeah. So um, I'm sure I could pick it up. I just, if if I were going to start doing any sort of programming, I would rather have at least one other person that were going to do a project with me to bounce ideas off from and to um, balance where I've got gaps in my knowledge because it's been, I haven't done any serious type programming <clears throat> in 10 years just about 10 years. Um, I have 
previously tutored a student in Python when I'd never taken a class in Python myself. Um, I took C++ when I was at the university and uh, Visual Basic.net, which is a dead language now as well for all intents and purposes. Um, so yeah, um, unfortunately, <clears throat> my experience going through IT programs, um, the schools, because they were getting subsidies from Microsoft, pushed hard Microsoft development environments. And in the time I've been out of my undergraduate degree, um, Visual Basic has, uh, .NET has been discontinued. Um, C++, thankfully, we learned that on, uh, on Solaris. And uh, when I was taking that class, um, I would remote into the Solaris box in the lab and uh, upload my source code, recompile it there for submission because I would already have it working on my Linux box that I had off campus in my apartment. So... <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Been studying YouTube since before lockdown and burnt myself out twice during COVID. Added to my skills and background, main problem I have is uploading slow internet and weather. Um do you have a library close to you? Libraries generally have halfway decent internet speed. Um, you can render your videos at home and um, upload them from a flash drive or something at the library and get things scheduled that way. Filming related videos and playlists. Yep. All right, we are at an hour and 45 minutes. We're doing all right tonight. We're doing all right. Um, yeah. Um, excuse me. So... Yeah, I I don't know, like even this video on DA file. I mean, that was 2019. And I did a video on that in 2022. And DA file is at version 23.01. And it was version 2101 when I did the last video. So that means that 2401 should be coming out at some point relatively soon. Um, but yeah, I, I did it in a short in February. I don't know. Porteous kiosk should be getting an update here relatively soon. So, and not tell me. Hmm. 
where I just want the direct download link. I don't want to log into anything unless you have to now. Um, well, download it, view more. Huh. They may have taken away their free download. Five five zero is live. Um, hmm. Maybe you've got to log in now to even get that. That's a bummer. Well, as long as it's still free, I guess I don't care so much, but, um, I don't think I've got... System downloaded from account A are bound to this account and cannot be used on account B due to unmatched customer ID. Yeah. Well, that's something I'll have to dig into at some point. This is 6.0. I swear they used to have a free download. Uh, let's see. Voices in the U.S. dollar currency are available upon request. Otherwise, we're paying in euros. 40 euros per PC per year. Hmm. I'm really perplexed. Okay, so what if we went to Distro Watch? And that's got the standard Porteus, but not the kiosk version. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe they've taken that option away. Wouldn't be the first time a company had done that. Oh, well. Let's see. GPS device is a Peplink Transmit Max Duo. It outputs an IP address and standard GPS string. If you Google the model and GPS, I think there is a syntax. Interesting. Uh, must be UK libraries don't allow uploading. Shops in town don't have fiber, 10 to 12 meg max. Everything else here is max for download. Ah, okay. Uh, we do allow uploading. Uh, I would have to look in our router config to see what I've got it set at. Um, seems like, I think I've got it set to 15 meg upload. Uh, I think because I, I, I updated it after we switched internet providers 
uh, at the end of last year. Maybe you should ship a drive with your videos on them to someone else who can upload them in batch. Yeah, that's... That's uh, an excellent suggestion. You need to start with about 30 videos. There's a list of reasons. It's main technique for starting a successful channel, probably eight pillars. Yep. Yeah, batch record and then schedule them to come out every week or every couple of weeks. And while those are scheduled, then make more videos. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's. So. All right. I want to. All right, let's do this and Okay, needed to um, make a note since it doesn't let me copy comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, they don't need to know YouTube Studio well. Um, start a channel with 30 videos. Yeah, that's one way to do it. You don't have to do it that way. Have a good night, Luke. All right, we are about five minutes out from hitting the two hour mark. And uh, ready to wrap and go somewhere a little cooler. We're in that uh, transitional period uh, where it's not quite warm enough to put the air conditioner in the window, but uh, being inside with all these lights on does make it kind of warm. So, but Hey, this is, this has been a, a good stream tonight and, uh, uh, hopefully, um, I've got a couple new ideas for videos or things I can remake a video on. I do want to find out what's going on with Porteous Kiosk and why I can't find their, their download. That's a little odd, little odd, but I understand sometimes uh, sometimes projects run out of money and they need to start charging for things they once gave away for free. So I 
guess I could dig out an old machine and put um, put Porteous kiosk on it, and um, yeah, I guess I could drum up forty euros to to do that for a year, just to have it to play with. Just seems odd that the ISO has disappeared. So let's let's do a little sleuthing. dot com on dot org all right so let's go back to 2023 sure let's choose september 27th why not I'm just curious to see. Yeah. Because you used to be able to download it direct. Interesting. Those buttons are gone. <laughs> All right. Well, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, Might as well get used to the heat since you're going to hell, Michigan. Har har. Looks like I'll start Bella's channel first. So my videos are 30 to 40 minutes long. Does Bella have a lot to say? <laughs> what are the videos about? Friday night stream. Um, I'm more or less planning on it at this point. Do the links to the old buttons still work? That's a good question. <laughs> yes, they do. At least for the, the older version of the kiosk software, which I'm pretty sure I've got on my computer or on uh, a thumb drive or something somewhere. Bella knows how to play to the camera. She does speak occasionally. <laughs> oh, my. All right. Just like that, the whiskey's gone. And we're at two hours and one minute. So... Copy the button link and see if there is a dash latest. Uh, so if we did Cordius Kiosk dash latest. Nope. That didn't work. Oh, I had to mess with that. That's just a bummer that they took that away. 
It's a bummer they took that away. In part because I actually make use of that software at the library, so I was really hoping to see a newer version. But uh, looks like we're going to have to pay for one copy. So that kind of stinks, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose. Last week I filmed Bella one shot over a half hour going for a walk to the trees and see an otter. Nice. All right, everybody. I am going to call it a night and uh, go relax a little bit before I turn in. Um, thank you all for coming out and sticking around for two hours. It's been fun. And uh, probably be back on Friday night. And we'll see what happens. See what happens. I'll have to come up with a, a concept for what I want to do Friday night. So if I get really inspired, there might be something interesting. Uh, but until Friday... Uh, thanks for watching and, uh, for, uh, supporting the channel and, uh, we'll see you soon.